In this video, we're going to briefly talk about vacuum pumps. There are some things that are important for technicians to know about vacuum pumps and some operational aspects. So let's give it a shot and walk through it. So a vacuum pump is a vapor pump that is used to create vacuum for evacuating a refrigeration system of moisture and other contaminants before refrigerant is recharged into the system. Okay. Vacuum pumps all contain many of these things. You have a carrying handle, you have an oil reservoir port and pump exhaust. You always have an oil level sight glass. If you have a vacuum pump that doesn't have an oil level sight glass, get a new vacuum pump. You'll have an oil drain plug. Some pumps have an oil, have a vacuum gauge, but that's becoming less and less frequent. You should have some sort of isolation valve. You should have a couple, uh, at least one port for vacuum intake. Most pumps now have more than one. You'll have the motor, of course. And the, by the way, the carrying handle is your actual sometimes pump exhaust on a lot of pumps. It is hollow and it is where the air exhaust comes. So just be aware of that. And if the pump falls over, the oil will flow out of the exhaust. So a lot of times it will come with a plug that you don't want to lose and you want to put that in. A high vacuum pump will produce a vacuum higher than 28.92 inches of mercury vacuum. Most manufacturers recommend a vacuum of 500 microns prior to charging a system. Depending on the system size and how contaminated that system is, it can take several hours. Creating such a low pressure condition is necessarily to completely dehydrate the system. What that means is we actually use vacuum to boil water off out of air at room temperature. It's necessary to remove all substances such as non-condensables, air, and water from the system because any foreign material that can cause higher pressures than usual and possibly damage the system. HVAC technicians should be familiar with the vacuum pump specifications in order to choose the proper vacuum pump for a given system. Ultimate vacuum is the highest vacuum that a vacuum pump can pull. It is the most important specification of a vacuum pump. It is usually measured in microns. The lower the number of microns, the higher the vacuum a vacuum pump can pull. Ultimate vacuum may also be called blank off pressure, but it is the deepest vacuum that a vacuum pump can pull. Free air displacement is the speed at which gas may be pumped through a vacuum pump. This is measured in cubic feet per minute. The higher a vacuum pump's free air displacement number, the more gas is removed per minute. Free air displacement may also be referred to as volume capacity. Okay, a few examples of vacuum pump capacities used for different size refrigeration system. 1 to 5, 1.5 CFM, probably a 3 to 5 ton residential system. 3 to 5 CFM, 5 to 100 ton medium systems. 10 to 15 CFM, large system over 100 tons. So you don't need a 10 to 15 CFM vacuum pump unless you're going to be doing large, very large commercial systems. The 3 to 5 range works pretty well. I think I have a 5 on my vehicle right now. Um, have had that used the same size for years. Been through a couple vacuum pumps, but used the same size for years. There are two main types of vacuum pumps, single stage and two stage. Single stage vacuum pumps use a single pump mechanism to draw a vacuum. These can only be used when triple evacuation methods are employed. Single stage vacuums will not draw a 500 micron vacuum, so we don't see them used that often anymore in the field. Two stage vacuum pump consists of two pumping mechanisms working in series. The two pumping mechanisms working together are able to chew, draw a vacuum much more efficiently than a single pump mechanism working alone. These are used when deep vacuum method is used. Two-stage vacuum pumps are what most often are used now. So what we have is we have the inlet which is in blue from the refrigeration system. Okay, it goes into the first stage. The first stage then discharges into the second stage 
and then we have the everything all the air is being removed by those two working together and then the red gases are outlet gases that come through the pump outlet and again that could be just an outlet port or it could be the handle okay all of these pumps have an isolation valve so you can isolate the vacuum pump from the line okay so you're able to check and see if the system is holding vacuum without shutting off the pump the purpose of the oil in the vacuum pump is to act as a lubricant for the pump okay it acts as a fluid seal between air gases and contaminants entering the pump from the refrigeration system during evacuation, gases and water vapor pulled from the refrigeration system often become trapped in the oil, which raises the oil level in the pump. Many vacuum pumps have a sight glass that allows the technician to check the oil level and oil color. Side note, I would not have a vacuum pump that does not have a sight glass. Just don't do it. You need that sight glass. Vacuum pump oil should never should be replaced frequently since oil rapidly becomes dirty when water and solvent vapors are drawn and dissolved into it. Water will also turn the oil white and foamy. Again, if you have a situation where you have a system that you know is leak free, okay, and you just cannot pull the desired vacuum, take a take the 10 minutes it's going to take shut off your vacuum line isolate the system and change the oil in that vacuum pump okay you should always have extra oil with you when you're doing refrigerant work because that vacuum pump oil will actually prevent you from having a good deep vacuum if dirty oil is left in the pump sludge will form and the pump life will be reduced when a vacuum pump oil is clear it means it's clean for good evacuation results, change the pump oil before each system evacuation and or test the vacuum pump. Quickest way to test the vacuum pump is to isolate the pump from the system and pull a vacuum on the vacuum hose only. So close your gauge handles, turn on your vacuum pump, pull a vacuum pump on the vacuum hose and make sure that it actually pulls a deep vacuum. It should go down to under 500 microns um, very, very quickly. Using a T-fitting, connect an electronic vacuum gauge between the vacuum pump and the center port of the gauge manifold. Close the low and high side manifold gauge valves. Start the vacuum pump. Allow the vacuum pump to run long enough to pull a vacuum of approximately 500 microns. Turn off the vacuum pump and wait two or three minutes, allowing the vacuum pressure to rise as moisture boils off inside the refrigeration hose. Pull another vacuum down to 500 microns. Watch the vacuum gauge reading. If it rises, check for leaks at the hose fittings. If a vacuum pump will not pull down to a high vacuum, change the oil. And always follow the manufacturer's directions. But dirty oil in a vacuum pump is the primary cause of not being able to pull a vacuum. So vacuum pumps is an important tool that every technician doing refrigeration work needs to have. It needs to be clean and maintained just like the rest of your tools. And don't always go for the cheapest vacuum pump. You do get what you pay for in refrigeration just like everything else.